sorry. <laughs> Hey, what's up fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily and today I am reviewing every single one of my hand knit sweaters. Whew. Let's do it. December 2023 is going to mark three years since I started knitting and in those three years I have knit a lot of sweaters. Today I wanted to go through all of those hand knit sweaters and do a little bit of a roast and toast for you just to reflect on how these garments have held up over time, um, how they fit into my sense of personal style now compared to when they were finished objects, some of the key learnings I got from that garment, um, if I would knit the garment again, all of those kinds of things. Because I think that having some time away from the garment being a recent finished object has let me sit with some of those thoughts. And I thought it would be interesting to just take the trip down memory lane, or if you're relatively new here, you'll get to see a good handful of these things for the first time. And so I would love to say that I've got a very specific way I'm going to structure this video. If you want to see some really nicely structured project reviews, I'm going to direct you towards String Things by Mel. She's got this set of like seven criteria or questions that she asks herself about each project. And there may be some just like organic overlap here as I talk through things, but Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of look at the project, share it with you, and see what things come to mind as I'm talking about them. So we'll go in kind of chronological order, or I'll try to go in as much of chronological order as possible for you. And we're going to jump into it. I don't even know how many I have to talk about. I think there's one, two, three, four, chronological order, five six, seven, eight, nine. Nine sweaters to share with you, which is not as many as I thought, but also I've done a good handful of tees and camis and a lot of accessories as well. So it kind of makes sense. Anyway, let's do it. We're going to do it now. First project I want to share with you is my Monica Geller tee by Sari Nordland. Every time I see this project, I ask myself, why I don't wear it very much. And then I remind myself that it is a close fitting tee made with an almost kind of rustic wool and mohair, which is therefore hot and itchy. <laughs> the Monica Geller tee by Sari Nordland is a bit of a set in sleeve construction. You pick up stitches, you work some short rows and you work a short sleeve. After having done the body bottom up, having shaped the armhole, and having done a three needle bind off. So this was a really interesting construction for me as a relatively new knitter. And you can see that my job of picking up stitches is not the cleanest in the world, but I really, really enjoyed working on this project. This was the first time I bought hand dyed yarn. The mohair that I used is lichen and lace, marsh mohair in the colorway lichen and that is what gives the fabric its very subtle variegation. The mohair is primarily green but you can see there's a lot of gold in it as well which really really warmed up and added interest to the Holskarn Super Soft that I held with it. And in Holskarn I think the colorway that I used was a very very pale green called Willow. The yarn's beautiful. The fit of this garment, beautiful. I would consider it to be quite similar to the fit of the Poppy Tee by Petite Knit, although the construction is quite different. It's bottom up, it's not top down, and the way the sleeve is constructed is, is very different. But overall, it's like a close fitting tee with like a very precise shoulder fit that I really, really enjoyed. And so, yeah, I don't know. I, I love the details on this garment. I love the twisted rib. This red yarn is telling me that this is the back. Um, there are no short rows 
in this pattern, but there is some flat worked shaping so that you can raise the back shoulder a little bit. I really love the twisted rib on the sleeve. I think this is an outstanding design. I just think it was my mistake working up a close fitting tee in a woolly yarn with a strand of mohair. This isn't the softest mohair that I've used. And I think if I were to knit this tee again, I would use something more similar to the original yarn that Sari Nordland used, which was Einram 2 Plus, which is a wool and silk blend. I think just taking the mohair out of this garment would make it absolute perfection. So this was the Monica Geller tee by Sari Nordland. And I think I finished this up sometime around September 2021. So most of my sweaters at this point are about two years old because the first handful of months that I was knitting, I don't have those sweaters anymore. I made really poor fiber choices, like using a really, really heavy spun yarn for the Sunday sweater by Petite Knit, which is designed in a very light and airy and lofty yarn. So I don't have any of those anymore. My oldest garment at this point is about two years old. Around the time that I finished my Monica Geller tee, I was also working on and wrapping up my Stockholm sweater, V-neck by Petite Knit. I also really enjoyed working on this project and there is also a good amount, there's good evidence that it was an earlier project for me as well. You can see again, the pickup job on this sleeve is much better. It's a very similar sleeve construction to the Monica Geller tee. However, this sweater is constructed from top down. I love this fabric. This fabric is another strand of Holst yarn. It's a blue color called Breeze. And the fluffy yarn that I used for this project is Uma by Amano, which I think has since been discontinued, but it's, it's pretty much like a Surrey alpaca type of base, which is interesting because I find that alpaca yarns irritate me quite a bit. I don't think Surrey irritates me. I actually think Surrey might irritate me less than mohair. Really, really love this fabric, and I find it to be a very, very comfortable fabric to wear next to skin. This was the first time that I worked a... Oh, is that true? Let me double check. Nope, never mind. I was going to say, I have Italian bind off on this. I have... Italian bind off on this as well and I had learned to do Italian bind off when I test knit the Celeste tee for Sari Nordland. That would have been like March of 2021. So I had had that skill already. Um, so there's Italian bind off on this. It's beautiful. I love the gauge of the ribbing. I think, you know, even early in my knitting, you can see I have quite good tension, I think. Um, and so this was also a really wonderful knit. I was super proud of it when I finished. My issues with this knit are, one, I wish it was a little more oversized. It does have less positive ease than I would prefer to have. And it's also the only real like blue knit that I have for myself. If you've seen the Stockholm sweater by Petite Knit, her version is knit in this almost royal blue color. And I was trying to, you know, echo the vibe of the original sample of the Stockholm V-neck. So that was why I made this blue selection, but I've just come to learn that this isn't really a color that I think flatters me super well, or that I really personally love to wear. And so because I love the fabric of this so much, I almost wonder if what I need to do is try to over dye this and rewash it or reblock it to see if I can get some more positive ease into it and go from there. But the thought of over dyeing something really, really scares me. So I don't know what to do. 
I could also let my mom try this out and see how she feels about it because she really likes to wear blue and she looks awesome in blue as well but she is very fiber sensitive of all the people in my life I've probably knit for her the least because she is the most fiber sensitive so not 100% sure what's going to become of this but it was an enjoyable knit I love the fabric the pattern was well written so that was the Stockholm sweater pie petite knit and then later that September, I did a test knit, another one for Sari Nordland. And this is her Luminin pullover. And when I saw this, when I saw the test call for this, before I even saw the test call for this, I thought that this lace motif down the front was the most gorgeous, the most exquisite thing I had ever seen. I was so, so, so excited when I was selected to test knit this. This sweater's knit top down, so you start with a quite wide ribbed collar, and then you work the raglan increases, and while you're working the raglan increases, you start your lace yoke, and then the lace continues all the way down the body. It is not present on the back. Now I have some thoughts about this sweater. First thing is, I don't think I actually got gauge on this sweater. I can't remember what yarn was called for in the pattern, but I can tell you that the yarn I used is Drops Snow in the colorway Chalk, held together with one strand of Rowan Alpaca Classic in the colorway snow or snowball and so you can see that the the rowan is the much whiter the lighter color and the chalk is definitely like a like a light very very soft gray so those two yarns held together i still don't think i quite achieved gauge and so overall i don't think i have as much of a oversized fit as i would want with a garment that is this chunky. The other thing is it's a very scratchy wool. Drop snow is a very, very, very itchy wool and there's no two ways around it. And so if you're wearing a layer underneath this, it's just extra warm. And I feel like it never really gets so cold here that I need this with an extra layer underneath with a coat on top. So I find this doesn't get a lot of wear for that reason, compounded with the fact that because the drop snow is a really chunky sort of roving type of yarn. It's a single ply. There's not a lot of twist to it. It is also a very pill prone fabric. I don't know how well you can see, but the fabric pills a lot. I think maybe I've worn this three times, four times seriously since I knit it, but it's, it's so gorgeous. So this is kind of one that I've considered parting ways with, but I also think it's worth keeping for just like the special one wear a year. The finished object photo that I took in this was maybe one of the first photos I posted on Instagram that like really popped off at the time. So I also have a bit of sentiment associated with it for that reason, but I don't know. I think I could challenge myself to wear this a little bit more this year. It's too much to wear for work, but maybe I can get myself involved in some more outdoor activities in the winter time. It's a little bit cooler toned of a color than I would prefer these days as well. So I'm not sure. I might see again if I can give this one a reblock to get some more positive ease into it, but it might just be one of those like special knits that I hold on to and accept that I don't wear a ton. The winter of 2021 is kind of when I got into sock knitting. So I don't think I knit another proper sweater until January of 2022. And this was when I did my champagne cardigan by, by Petite Knit. This is this is hard to hold up, so there's probably going to be try on clips where you can see more. Uh, but my champagne cardigan by Petite Knit. This at the time was like 
my bucket list knit, the most ambitious knit that I had taken on because of the double knit button band. But I am so proud, I was so proud, I still am so proud of how this garment turned out. So for the yarn, I worked this up in Knit Picks. I used the Aloft Silk Mohair in the colorway Silver, and I used the Knit Picks Simply Wool Worsted in the colorway Winkle? I think it's Winkle. One of the like the lightest grays. All of the Simply Wool Worsted colorways are natural. Um, they're not dyed, and so it's just one of the lightest grays. And so I was really pleased with myself for coming up with a yarn combo for this pattern that allowed the whole garment to cost less than $100 Canadian because using the recommended yarns in the pattern, it would have been closer to like a $300 sweater, which especially at the time I was not willing to commit to. So I was pleased with myself for coming up with that color combo. I really love the details of this cardigan. I do enjoy a chunkier raglan and you will see that come back. I much prefer a two or three stitch raglan over a one stitch raglan. I am so proud of how clean my double knit button band came out. The only issue I have with the double knit button band, which is certainly not a deal breaker, is where I started it or where I ended it, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a, a blip. And I don't know how that could have been avoided, but my gauge for the double knit button band, I think is absolutely bang on. It doesn't like scrunch up the fabric too much. I really love the mother of pearl buttons that I sewed on to this garment. And I think that my tension on the, where am I looking? My tension on the ribbing for the sleeves, here we go. My tension on the ribbing for the sleeves is just, I think, perfect. My tubular bind off, I really like. I made modifications to the sleeve decreases to get the fit that I wanted. So I was just very proud of myself for, for achieving this knit. Now, a few reasons why I don't wear this one as much as I would like to. Uh, again, we've got a worsted weight mohair, sorry, a worsted weight wool paired with a mohair. So this is a pretty heavy garment. It's a heavy garment. And the gauge of the fabric is quite dense. I can't remember if I gauge swatched for this or not, but it does feel like a heavy, dense fabric. I think the pattern itself calls for a DK weight plus a worst, uh, plus a mohair. Um, so it's understandable why that is. It's a heavy garment. It's a very warm garment. And again, we're talking a much cooler toned colorway than I currently prefer to wear. But I do love the fit of this cardigan. I am knitting up more cardigans this fall. I'm planning at least one, but most likely two new cardigans for this fall season, potentially even three. We shall see about that. Sticking with the mohair, but lightening things up a bit, in February, March of 2022, I knit my Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. Now this, I posted a reel on my Instagram when I was working through the yoke of this, and to this day, that reel is, I think, my most viewed reel. It's got like several hundred thousand views on it, which was super, super cool. And I think this is an absolutely gorgeous garment. The yarn that I used is the Knitting Loft Dust, which is their silk mohair in the colorway Squashed Plums. So it is a very lightly variegated kind of tonal mauve purple silk mohair. And you can see like as I move the garment, it is a silk mohair with a lot of shine to it. It's an absolutely gorgeous silk mohair. As far as hand dyed mohairs go, it is like my, my favorite I've ever touched. Um, it's just, it's exquisite. It's exquisite mohair. 
This is an absolutely beautiful garment. I love the fit. I love, I love the fit. <laughs> The fabric is also very beautiful, but the problem with getting a lot of wear out of this is that it is 100% mohair. And so you're maybe noticing a trend here that these like super hot, super wooly, super fluffy sweaters just aren't 100% my vibe. Um, and to boot, because this is a bit of a lighter colored mohair, at least compared to the black pants that I tend to wear, I was finding I was getting the fluff kind of everywhere. I was overheating in this. And so this one gets very limited wears as well. That being said, I do want to try wearing this when it is like very cold out, potentially layered over a turtleneck. That isn't really a look that I've explored very much, but that I would like to because what I was finding was that I was wearing this with just a tank top or a camisole underneath. And so as I would heat up and get sweaty, that made the prickliness feel a little bit worse. And so I think that, you know, as airy and lofty as this is supposed to be, I might need to try to wear it when it is really cold so that I can do a little bit more layering and be less likely to become overheated. As far as the color goes, even though this is a cooler toned color, I do think that there is enough warmth in it from some of the more orangey speckles that it suits me quite well. I really like the shaping of the v-neck on this. It's a gorgeous garment. I just soon learned that maybe 100% mohair or like wool plus mohair garments weren't the thing for me. And so that brings me to my next sweater, which is another one that became quite popular on High Fiber Knits. And I think my Instagram like profile photo is still me in this sweater. And this is my Louvre sweater by Petite Knit. Again, you can see we've got a little bit of a chunky raglan going on. This pattern is a raglan. It's also worked top down. So you start with the neck, you do the raglan, you split for sleeves, you knit the body. Yeah, top down raglan. So this was the first time that I did a tubular cast on, which turned out okay. It's not the nicest tubular cast on I've seen. I've not done tubular cast on since. I can tell you that for free. Um, I do usually knit things with folded necklines anyway. And so I prefer to, in that case, just do a standard cast on. And for things like hats and socks, I tend to use the German twisted cast on over tubular cast on because I just find it a lot less fussy. So I went for it. I was like, this is going to be a big sweater project. I might as well just do the thing. And so I did the tubular cast on. This was also the first time that I had to work short rows while also working a raglan. I, oh no, that might not be true. I might have had to do that on the champagne cardigan. But for some reason, I remember doing the short rows over the raglan on this sweater and being initially super confused, but then super proud of myself for figuring it out. The yarn that I used for this project is Knit Picks Palette in the colorway Iris Heather, which is this warm toned purple with all of these orange and peach sort of melange colors mixed in. It is an absolutely stunning yarn. And I know there's a lot of mixed feelings about this yarn. I've seen a lot of people say that Knit Picks Palette held single or held with a mohair seems to pill a lot. But as far as my pullovers go, this is my most worn, one of my most worn pullovers. And I don't think I have had to fabric shave it at all. And there's maybe a little bit of pilling down the underside of the sleeve. But overall, for a sweater that is a year old and has received a good amount of wear, I think it's looking like it's in really, really great shape. 
I do think this is one of those yarns that over time does that thing where it squeezes up a little. I know a lot of people, oh, I think Andrea Mowry gets questions about this a lot and people have commented on it before. I think also maybe, maybe Laura Penrose has commented on this about sleeves getting shorter after being knit over time. And I think that is a function of the properties of the yarn. And I have experienced that with this. I feel like when I first finished it, the sleeves were like right over my hand. They were huge, they were cozy. And then as I wore them, it kind of shrunk up a little, but the fabric doesn't really look like it's felted anywhere. It's certainly possible that that's what's happened, but um, I did wear this one time and I was walking around a lot and I got quite sweaty. So I was just like, I'm just gonna give this a rewash. But it's held up really well. I really love the thick ribbed cuff on this. And I also modified the sleeve on this sweater so that the shaping happens um, at a different decrease rate. But I think that this sweater, there is, I take no issue with it at all. I think the color is gorgeous, um, but I do hope to knit. I have another sweater quantity of palette um, in the colorway Oregon Coast. And my experience with this sweater knit on this four millimeter gauge has been so positive that I am almost 100% going to be knitting another sweater in this precise yarn combo. Will it be another, another Louvre sweater? I don't know. I really like the way this neckline opens up over the body, but I don't know that I would knit another funnel neck. If I were to use this pattern again, which I might just because I have it and I like the fit of it, I might just opt to do everything as is, but then fold in and sew down the collar. I did base my Oregon Coast sweater quantity off of how much I used for this pattern. So I know I can do it. It's just a matter of if that is in fact the choice I will make and when it will be knit. So this one for me is pretty much a 10 out of 10. It may be one of my favorites. And honestly, I'll see how much I wear it this fall, but I may even consider if I don't knit another one of these, I may consider just sewing down the collar. I could always do that, but realistically, the smart thing to do is just knit another one with a folded collar and then keep this one as is. So I have the high neck option. And then I knit a sweater that gave me a run for my money. <laughs> In May of 2022, I graduated from my master's degree. I did a master of teaching at U of T. And so my graduation present to myself was a sweater quantity of Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair and Knitting for Olive Merino for the Hour Pullover by Sari Nordland. The Hour Pullover by Sari Nordland is a sweater pattern that was released very early on in my knitting career. I think it came out in the winter of 2021, but at that point in time, I don't think I was ambitious enough for this pattern. I was certainly not ready to spend the money on the Knitting for Olive yarns that were called for in the pattern. And I just kind of set it aside and I was like, this is going to be like on my bucket list of knits to make and hopefully it gets done. Um, and then I decided it's, it's, this is the time. This is the time. It took me a really, really long time to pick the colors that I wanted to go for, but I ended up choosing the Knitting for Olive Merino in the colorway Marzipan and the Soft Silk Mohair in the colorway Oatmeal, which once again, gives me a little bit cooler tone to the color than I prefer to go for, but it's not quite gray, so I don't mind it too much. And so, The Hour Pullover by Sari Nordland is a bottom-up raglan construction, which is why it was so difficult. And so, I knit 
the body, you cast on for the body, you do your twisted rib. I love twisted rib. And I think that the smaller twisted rib details on this sweater uh, really play into sort of the femininity of the overall silhouette of the sweater. So you cast on, you do your twisted rib, you knit up the body, you cast on for the sleeve, you do your twisted rib, you increase up the sleeve, you do it again, and then you join them all in the round. And that was the most fiddly and frustrating thing I think I've ever had to do in my knitting beside tinking back lace. It was such a slog. And then knitting up the raglan, for some reason, I just kept making mistakes and I kept having the wrong number of stitches on my sleeves and I kept having to go backwards. And at a certain point I was like, you know what? There's so many decreases along this raglan. Who is going to know if I'm off by a stitch or two? I can just fudge it a bit, make it work. And you can kind of tell it's a bit of a compound raglan because here you're not doing decreases as often as you're doing them up this way as you're getting toward the shoulder slope. So I struggled with this one, man. I really, really struggled with this one, <laughs> but it's such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful finished object. You finish it off on the shoulder with a three needle bind off, which is one of my absolute favorite techniques. I love three needle bind off. I think it looks amazing. And you end up with this absolutely gorgeous sweater. There's no short rows. You shape the neck, you raise up the back neck by working flat. I do think this could have used some short rows or a little bit more raising in the back neck because when I wear it, it does kind of do a bit of that, but it's, it's, it is stunning. The way the raglan is so wide set, I think does a very similar thing for the garment as a whole as this blouse number one by my favorite things knitwear. You've got the shoulder shaping really wide set and it just kind of opens up the chest really, really nicely. And I think it almost gives it a little bit of a dolman sleeve kind of vibe. So this sweater has a very different silhouette from any of the other sweaters that I've knit. And I think that is also partially because the sleeve stays quite narrow for quite a while. So you have a little bit of this like fit and flare that ends up happening. And so I really, really, really love this sweater. Now, if we compare it to some of my earlier sweaters, that were fingering weight and mohair. This one definitely gets the most wear out of all of them. I think because the color is a lot easier to wear, that's one thing. The other thing is all of my other sweaters with wool and mohair have a much more rustic wool in them, plus the mohair. The knitting for all of Merino and the soft silk mohair, honestly, like, you do get what you pay for. In, in this instance, I do believe that. And so this garment does get a lot more wear. I find it just suits my personal style a little bit better than the bright blue or the mossy green. And I find that if I'm looking for something that does have sort of that warm, woolly, soft hug feel, I'm gonna go for this because it has a little bit more positive ease before I go for my Stockholm sweater, for example. So really this one does feel a bit more luxurious. It does make me feel a little bit more beautiful when I, I wear it. I was wearing it when Adam and I went to tour some condos in March. I can't remember if I wore it when we saw our place. I don't think I did. Um, but I wore it when we were touring condos and I also wore it to beer fest with a long sleeve underneath it. And it was very, very comfortable and I didn't need to wear a coat. So yeah, this is my hour pullover by Sari Nordland. I love the twisted rib detail. I love the silhouette of this sweater overall. And I think this is something that I would knit again, despite my challenges with the construction because I love the fit so much. And I would probably opt to knit it in maybe like a merino silk 
blend or a merino cotton blend so that I can still get the drapiness that I might lose from having a looser gauge with the mohair in this fabric. So my hour pullover by Sari Nordland. This is just a very classic, very classic sweater that I really do love. This one, maybe I give because of the mohair, like if the Louvre is my 10 out of 10, this is like my 9.75 out of 10. And then we get to December of 2022 when I test knit the Harlow sweater for Kadri. Now this sweater is probably one of my favorite fitting sweaters of all of the ones that I have knit. It is oversized. I really like the dropped shoulder. It's got a very casual and a very cozy feel to it. I really enjoy the two by two ribbed detail of the collar. And I think this I-cord shoulder detail is a really subtle but very distinguishing feature of this sweater. This sweater also features a very wide sleeve and a split hem, which are, where is it? Right here. Which are two features that don't exist on any of my other sweaters. So it is also quite unique in that regard. And I really, really love this yarn, but I think it's knit slightly too loose of a gauge. So this yarn is BC Garns Loch Lomond, which is 100%, I believe it's a GOT certified organic wool. And this is in the colorway Earth, which is like a warm slate gray with white and orangey yellow flecks of tweed. So I think as far as grays go, this is the closest to a warm gray that I think I have in all of my sweaters. So I think this is the most flattering gray for my complexion um, as far as my yarn choices go. And I think that's also helped by the fact that the yellow tweedy bits help to warm things up. But again, I think that I just, this yarn needed to be knit like a needle size or two lower because the fabric just feels a little bit too stretchy and delicate to me. And when I put on this sweater and I put a coat over top of it, because it is so oversized and because the yarn itself is so like, it's so airy and lofty, when I take off the coat, because the yarn, and you can see, because the yarn's been crushed a bit, it doesn't really, it wrinkles quite easily, which can be a little bit frustrating. And so for that reason, the sweater feels almost a little too delicate for me to wear sometimes, um, or I'm concerned about snagging it or stretching it out. And that's a shame because this is one of the most comfortable wools that I've worn next to skin. It's got a very soft, but still kind of rustic and toothy feeling to it. This would be an awesome yarn for color work, actually. There's a lot of different colors in this BC Garn Loch Lomond. Um, it would be absolutely epic for color work, especially with the little different tweedy bits coming through. And so this is not something that will be unraveled and re-knit, but if I don't decide to knit the sweater's quantity of Knit Picks palette that I have into a Louvre sweater. Um, there is a chance that it becomes another one of these, just potentially knit on a smaller needle. I know I like that yarn knit on a four millimeter needle, and I think this was knit either at a 4.5 or a five millimeter needle. I don't quite remember, but it's a gorgeous sweater. This one, I would probably put it like a nine out of 10, just because again, the, the fabric is just not as dense and substantial as I want it to be, but the pattern, awesome. The fit, awesome. I did add elastic to the collar, which has helped a lot. I really love the neckline shaping that you have going on here as well. And so, I feel like if I had just knit with a needle size down and maybe gone up a garment size, 
then it would have been perfect. It would have been a 10 out of 10, but for now it's not quite there. I will have to see how much wear I get out of this this winter, this this fall and winter. Because I finished this right before the winter holidays. Like it was like maybe December 22nd when I finished this. And then I wore it a good handful of times to work in the new year, but I should probably just start tracking when I wear my different sweaters. That'd probably just be the smart thing to do. It's the Harlow sweater by Kadri. And then that brings us to January of 2023. And this is when I knit my traveler's cardigan by Ozetta. And so here we have it, the traveler's cardigan by Ozetta. This I knit using Noro Madara in the colorway sake. And Noro Madara is a wool alpaca and silk blend. And this colorway sake is a gray base with all the color of tweed, all the colors of tweed. It is a bit of a slubby, thick and thin yarn, which I think worked well in the context of this cardigan. And so the Traveler's Cardigan by Ozetta is very interesting because you cast on and you work a little bit of shaping and it is a bit of a drop shoulder construction. So you do your back, you do your panels, and then you join in the round. <laughs> you join under the arms for the front and the back. But as you're doing all of this shaping at the front, you are simultaneously working your, let's see if I can show this to you. You're simultaneously working your button band on a smaller needle size using double pointed needles. So this project was not very portable to knit, but I did knit most of it while I was home sick in January. Um, I got very, very unwell toward the end of the month and I had to take almost a full week off of work um, because I just felt so poorly. So that's when I did most of this knitting, to be perfectly honest. The, the body is cropped, the sleeves are very much like wrist bone length. They don't come over my arm very much. So this cardigan definitely has more of like a cute cropped bomber jacket kind of fit. So it is a very, very wearable cardigan. As you can see, I didn't add buttonholes or buttons to this cardigan. So I can only wear it open. But for me, that's not too much of an issue because as you can see, I think there's like a little bit, I can't remember now. There might be a very small amount of shaping to bring the cardigan around the front, but it does have a little bit more of like a round neck as opposed to a V-neck. And I just knew for myself, I wasn't going to wear uh round neck cardigan buttoned up even not even like not even partially buttoned up so i just decided to for the ease of knitting omit the buttonholes and resign myself to the fact that this would never be worn buttoned up i love the fabric of this sweater i think it's a perfect density you can tell because the body's worked flat and the sleeves are worked in the round you can tell that the sleeves are a bit of a tighter gauge and i do think i would have preferred if the whole cardigan was at the gauge that the sleeves are at but it's not a huge deal to me because the yarn does contain alpaca content and it's my only sweater that has alpaca aside from the Surrey that's in my Stockholm v-neck sweater. I do find this one a little itchy to wear sometimes if I get overheated especially um, but it's never been so much of a problem that I haven't been able to tolerate wearing this sweater which is a good thing and I find that because the Noro Madara has all of these different colors in it. It is super easy to wear with almost any other color I want to wear, which is awesome. Because although it is my most recently knit sweater, it is easily my most worn out of all of them, out of all of them. It's easily my most worn hand knitted 
garment, honestly, never mind sweater. It's probably been worn more times than any other individual knit that I have made. And so my success with the Traveler's Cardigan by Ozetta was kind of the final thing I needed to realize that one, I don't really need to be knitting sweaters with any mohair at all for them to be visually interesting, super cozy. And two, I find cardigans very, very wearable. So if I'm not going to get a ton of wear out of my champagne cardigan because it is so heavy, because it is gray, because it has mohair, despite how beautiful it is, then what I need to prioritize moving forward are some just some woolly cardigans, some cardigans without mohair, some sweaters without mohair, and etc. I think that in addition to knitting all of my sweaters, over time I have really learned that I prefer wearing warmer toned colors over cooler toned colors. There can be some exceptions with neutrals, but I am realizing that when it comes to the yarns that I find appealing, more often than not, I'm looking for something that is quite neutral, but with a twist. And I think that's very evident in this Noro yarn, this Noro Madara. I think it is evident in this BC Garn Loch Lomond with all of its tweedy bits. And I think it is also evident in the gorgeous heathering of this Knit Picks palette. So as far as like my yarn selections go moving forward, I know I'm going to probably want to stay away from alpaca. I'm probably going to want to stay away from mohair, at least for sweaters or areas that are quite sensitive, like the forehead or the neck. I am planning to knit a pair of mittens with some mohair and I do love socks with mohair a lot. So mohair is not going away completely, um, but we're kind of aiming for, for this vibe here going forward. And you know, that's not to say that I'm not going to be adventurous with my color selections. I am planning to knit just like a highlighter or like a bright orange, it's not really highlighter orange, but a very, very bright orange sweater currently on my needles. I played around with some brighter greens this year. I'm playing around with really a lot of orange this fall, actually, now that I think of it. And so, you know, I'm still going to be adventurous, but for me, one of my priorities in my knitting has always been wearability. And so at times it's okay if the creative inspiration and the process takes over from there. But as I am continuing to curate my wardrobe, I find a lot of satisfaction in wearing my knits and enjoying wearing my knits. And I don't wanna feel like I have to wear knits that I don't love wearing because they are hand knitted and I feel an obligation to wear my hand knit garments. So for me, the intentionality piece and the reflections on all of these sweaters that I have already knit are very important to do. That being said, there are some of these knits that I said, you know, I don't wear it as much because of X, Y, Z. And some of these reasons are more off-putting than others. For example, the, the Monica Geller tee just being so itchy is, is kind of a deal breaker. Whereas I can, you know, depending on the weather, convince myself to wear the champagne cardigan, for example. Those are things to consider. Another thing like the, the blue of the Stockholm V-neck sweater, there's like very little possibility that I find myself reaching for that color at this point in time. And even almost immediately after I finished knitting it, I didn't wear it a whole ton just because I didn't feel my greatest while I was wearing that color. Whereas I put on this you know, the traveler's cardigan and I feel awesome. I put on my louver sweater and I'm like, this sweater is so cool. I feel awesome in this. And 
I think it's just this reflection exercise was really important for finding, you know, what are the themes in terms of what makes me feel awesome and what makes me feel not awesome. And I think that, you know, as I'm reaching my third full year of knitting, this fall, I feel the most confident than I ever have about the intentionality that I've used to select my projects and my yarns. And that's not to say that I'm never going to get things wrong again, where I'm never going to make a knit that I don't end up wearing a ton. It's a very real possibility. But I think now I have some proof of concept, at the very least, for some of the decisions that I'm making, which makes me feel a lot better about things, makes me feel a lot more excited about things. And yeah, it was fun. This was a lot of fun. All of these knits I'm still super proud of. I think, you know, there's been some obvious growth in my knitting, but not necessarily in the knitting quality. I think even the earlier projects, like they were pretty decent. But I think the distinguishing thing now is selecting the right yarns for the project, and selecting patterns that I know I'm going to wear, and selecting colors that I know I'm going to enjoy. And I think that those are some of the more underrated things that go into the overall quality of a knit. And for me, the growth has not so much been in, in the skill, but for me, the growth has been in the knowing myself piece which I found very rewarding. And so I hope you've enjoyed seeing me talk through all of these projects. Um, it's been something that I've wanted to do for quite a while now. And I think since we're moving into fall, this was the perfect time to do it because we kind of got the preview. I got to share with you that maybe I need to do X, Y, Z, and I can actually keep myself accountable now to paying attention a little bit more explicitly to what I am wearing and loving to wear this this coming season. So thanks for spending this time with me. I once again hope you enjoyed and until I get to see you all again, I am wishing you health and happy knitting. Bye everyone.